Hello there, my name is Nigel Griffiths, who work at IBM Power Systems Europe, mostly on AX and Linux. This is a personal open source project, so don't contact me at IBM, contact me via Nigel A. Griffiths at hotmail.com, and the project wiki is at tinyurl slash njmon, that's actually on sourceforge.net. In this series, we're looking at a new Unix performance graphing tool that I'm working on, and this video is an introduction to NJMon. My claim to fame is I am the N in NMon, Nigel's monitor. This is a performance monitoring project that we started in the late 1990s, so it's well over 20 years old. Started off as a performance monitor for AIX. It became so popular that it actually went into the AIX source code now and is delivered with every new version of AIX. Slightly later, we started a version for Linux, and that's Linux on the same power processor as AX uses, but also on mainframes and AMD64 and ARM processors, anything that runs Linux is capable of running NMON. It also runs on the PowerVM VO server, the virtual I.O. server. And then now we're moving to a, a newer project called NJMON. The J stands for JSON. So I'm going to tell you about NJMON by comparing it to the older NMON. On the left here we have NMON running on a screen live telling you what the CPU, the memory, the disks and the top processors are are actually doing. This is still very useful. We can, if we have a problem, immediately go to the machine and see what, what's the problem. Can we uh, fix this quickly to allow the application to carry on? On the right hand side, a lot of people save the NMON data to a file, uh, then draw graphs on that data. We have the NMON analyzer, initially by Steve Atkins, now maintained by Ron McCarger at IBM. It's an Excel spreadsheet that does all the hard work. Um, we also have a newer tool called NMON chart. This is actually a, a corn shell program and it generates a web page page that you look at in a browser and along the top you can see these buttons in here this lets you change the graph you're actually looking at we're looking at one in here that looks at the top processors and it instantly tells you which ones are using the most CPU the most IO and is bigger in memory in the 20 years or more since NMON was designed and developed computers have changed beyond recognition they're so much faster memory's bigger networks much faster disks much faster but much larger as well these were limitations when we started off N1 and we would have done things differently if we were starting again. Also the N1 file format, it's comma separated values, but it's quite quirky and there were things that we were forced to do because the Lotus 123 and Microsoft Excel spreadsheets had limitations and we had to work around those in the file format. So I was thinking with our super fast computers, what sort of things would we actually change? Well, first of all, I'd like to collect every possible stat. We don't know what we want in the future, so let's grab everything now so that if we decide to look at a new stat, we can see the history of it. The next thing is we'd use some industry standard format for our data so that we can share that data with other applications and tools. We'd also want that format to be flexible so we can add new stats without upsetting those tools, unlike the NMON format. We'd want to capture all the data across the network, remove that problem of getting the NMON file from your various servers to some central place to do the graphing. There's also some excellent new languages for data handling, make use of those, and we'll use some new tools. First of all, for data handling, we'll actually have some sort of database-like thing to actually put all the data, and then there's new tools available for online graphing via a web browser. When I ask people how they're actually using NMON, 95% of the people are collecting the data files, moving them to their workstation, and then graphing them. And about only 5% of people are actually using using the N1 view on the screen to actually look at the computer right now. Most people are using the uh, N1 analyzer or now increasing numbers of the N1 chart tool. N1 chart is particularly fast, so it lets you deal with lots of servers and the data from them. I have worried people about N1. It is still very good at what it does, uh, and it's not going away, so don't worry about that. But we covered some of the limitations that we're going to fix with our new tool. And Jmon doesn't have two modes. It only has one mode. You're either looking on your browser at the current data as it arrives from your servers and updating the screen as it goes um, or you can say no give me the last seven days worth of data or the last seven months worth of data and it just redoes the timeline on the bottom of the screen. The format we're going to use is JSON format and that's going to be stored into what's called a time series database and this removes all those data management problems with all those NMON files and we're going to collect something like 20 times more stats. JSON files are very fast to process with Python this is one of the new data languages Languages. I found it very interesting to learn and we're very powerful for our new tools. We've already created an NJMON chart, which is very much like the NMON chart. In fact, it produces the same sort of output, but the tool is now written in Python and we have the first 36 graphs. 
Hegemon. It's going to inject this data into a time series database. Of course, you can still collect the file and move it to the database machine and push it into the database. We call that an injecting. Um, or if you have SSH set up, encrypted key set up between your, your targets and your hosts, and then you can use SSH to correct a, a socket directly to do the injection into the database. Some people haven't got that set up between every single computer in the computer room. So we have a new thing called the collector where NJMON can open a socket to the collector and the collector will either save a file and or inject it into the database. So plenty of options there for centrally managing the data. The real-time browser applications for drawing graphs are absolutely amazing compared to what we've had in the past. Everything's live and dynamic. You can create new charts on the fly and we'll look at those later in this series. We also have a thing called a template. So it's a series of graphs, maybe 20 or 30 graphs in one template. And then we have a little button we can press and we can select the server we want to look at and then it will flip to the data from a different server but the same set of graphs allows you a very flexible way of looking at your servers. We can also do things like alerts. I haven't actually tried this, there's just not enough time. But we could set thresholds so that it sends email to you or your system admin team saying this is too high or this is too low. And we can also have it flashing things on the screen to try and uh, draw your attention to something that may be going wrong. So here's a one minute on JSON format. They start and stop with these little curly braces. I mean, here we have a bunch of labels in uh, double quotes. And then we can either have a string of text, we can have integers, floating point numbers, booleans, and we can also have a lower level JSON format. An example of that with this could be CPU utilization, and in here there'll be another JSON record which has the user system idle and await uh, numbers inside here. If you look at the Python language, it has a natural data type called a dictionary, and as you can see, very similar to JSON records. Python has a module for JSON, and that means we can read in and write out JSON files very, very quickly, and that allows us to then manipulate the data we have out of NJMON. NJMON actually has a one of these data records for each of the snapshots of the data that it takes, and they're separated by a comma, and we get a whole series of them. It's called a list. In the Python dictionary terms, and we can declare data like this, which for a C program really feels weird but it's really fast and flexible and then if you want to pick out a particular data structure we just name the data structure pass it the label we want and it goes and finds it in this case it's going to print out one two three four five six i just want to give you some eye candy now for the graphs that you should be expecting to come as the output not going to go into any details here but we got physical cpus memory and uh, cpu utilization numbers here this is what's called typical for a dark mode very fashionable i'm told at the moment there's also a light mode if you prefer we have these sort of single stat panels which are good for your configuration details and if we hover over things then it will highlight the numbers in here we're hovering over here the idle number 99 percent and we can change the colors by clicking on these sorts of things this is part one there's a little hint here that there's more graphs below so if we scroll down we get a whole other section of uh, graphs in here and we can have loads and loads of graph in a single template there's an example of a different template here it's looking at an entire machine it's an s924 called red here are all the logical partitions and how much physical cpu they're using so you can work out that uh, one is using more than all the others these are the ax partitions on here here's the hungry one silver five these are two Linux partitions, Ubuntu and Red Hat. Down below we have two VO servers, so we can see that what the whole machine is doing and working it out if we can make adjustments to make it go faster. So we're going to get the data into JSON format. There's lots of tools that can handle JSON and perhaps even graph it. You could use Python to do data manipulation as well and probably graphing. If you already have that plumbing, carry on. Just pull in the new data from NJMON and off you go. But I've looked at particular tools as an example I can use to show you the power of what we can actually do these days. So I've looked at InfluxDB and Grafana. There's the Elastic Stack, sometimes called Elk or Elasticsearch. There's another one called Splunk, which is quite well known. There's one called Prometheus. And I put that down as tricky. Um, Prometheus likes to have a central machine that pulls for data from your virtual machines for the data, where NJMON is doing it the other way around. You have an agent that pushes the data into the database. So that's a tricky one for us to deal with. We'll see if there's workarounds for that. And there's many more. If you have your favorite, well, you carry on and use that. These tools have three parts of them, at least. They have a data gathering agent that you put on your virtual machine to get the stats. And then we have a stats database where all the data gets pushed. And then you, from there, you graph them. 
Some of them, like Elastic and Splunk, are good at handling very odd formatted log files for analysis. So you'd look at the log file, tell it which columns are which, what are their names, and then you can graph those particular stats. They will see JSON data as highly structured data, which doesn't need much explanation. They also tend to have uh, an open source free version that you can uh, download and use. Uh, the exception there is Splunk, that is uh, closed source. There's an enterprise version, which you can buy and run on your own computers. They come with extra facilities like support and uh, high availability, scaling to much larger sizes, backup and restore sort of, of maintaining your databases. They also, if you don't want to run your own computers running the software, they'll host it on the cloud so they'll actually manage all the machines and the applications and the servers and you just log in, push your data into the cloud and then you can pull the data out to graph that. But the choice is up to you and so are the costs. I could have just developed the NJMON data collector and stop saying well it's a system admin problem to provide the rest of the plumbing and doing all the graphs but I think in JMON would have been completely ignored at that point you need to see the eye candy the output that you can get from this to warrant the effort to put it into installing it what I need is a worked example of the data and graphs now I can't build an ocean I can't test manage document four different time series databases and four different graphical engines. It's just not enough time in the day. This is a personal project in my own time. Although having said that, I'm using it on a couple of IBM projects right now. It's proving very useful. So I need to choose one to demonstrate the power of the NJMON data. My criteria needs to be open source. That's cheap, that's good. Easy to install or run. I don't want to waste time doing lots of management. Uh, I like a popular one that's highly rated on the web. Go with the flow. And it was recommended by the IBM Montpellier team in France. They use it quite a lot. And as a Python programmer now, I want to a Python module to insert the data into the database. And the winners are InfluxDB and Grafana. When I started investigating all these tools, I found they had quite a few relationships between them. So here's my selected NJMON talking to InfluxDB and Grafana doing the, the graphics. InfluxDB comes from a company called InfluxData, and they have their own data collector. It's called Telegraph, pretty powerful tools, and has Chronograph, which does the, the graphing for them. Now, InfluxDB can talk to both graphing engines without any problems. So if we start using Grafana, we quickly work out it has lots of data sources, databases that it will talk to, including relational databases, there's one called Graphite in here, and the Elastic tools are available as a data source into Grafana. In fact, Graphite and Grafana have a common source code uh, heritage. We mentioned Prometheus before, one that was tricky for NJMON push mode to work because it prefers to pull the data. But if we're using Grafana for doing a graph, we can talk to InfluxDB for NJMON and Prometheus for all the other stats that you're collecting, and that works fine too. Splunk, however, sits off to the side. It's got its own collector database and graphing engine. This is a little bit off topic, but we have NMON down here collecting its regular data, and we can put it through two different tools. There's NMON to JSON. I wrote this, and it converts the NMON format into JSON and then JSON can be inserted into the Influx database. And a separate person, not myself, has created an NMON to InfluxDB tool. You can download that and give that a try if you want. So even if you've got some of the older stuff out here, we can pull that into the Influx database and manage that as well. One little word of warning, once you have a time series database and a graphing tool like this, you'll suddenly think, hang on, we could put a lot of other useful stuff in here. Perhaps you have things like transaction rates from your database, web hits from rates, um, online user counts, uh, batch start and stop times, that could all be added to the same database and you can compare your computer performance to the real work that it's doing for users. My and extract tools that get the data out of the HMC REST API, like temperature, some server stats, uh, things like the shared storage pool stats are in there as well. Uh, they could all be put into the same database and compare and contrast it. I have a Raspberry Pi gathering computer room temperatures. Well, that can go into the same database and we can draw graphs as well. And it uh, takes all that work. You get the stats and then you can very quickly insert those into the database and then they're available for people to use. Well, that's enough for the introduction movie to this series. Part two will be installing InfluxDB and Grafana, which should be a fairly short movie because it's really easy. That is why I chose them after all. Uh, number three will be installing and setting up NJMON. A little trickier because there's quite a few options. And then uh, the one after that will be looking at templates, looking at some live graphs that uh, you can look forward to. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up. And if you want to be told when there's more in this series come out, please subscribe.